This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Okay, well, let's look now at um, the second question in section B of the paper F2 specimen paper. Uh, looking at it, well, uh, and immediately, obviously, we're given um, uh, part of a spreadsheet there. And although you can't be asked in the exam to prepare a spreadsheet, you are expected to um, prove you understand them. But before we start going all the way through it and uh, wasting too much time, uh, let's do what's required. Part A, it says which formula will correctly calculate the direct labour efficiency variance. Well, for the efficiency variance, you must have learnt your rules for variances because although not here, but certainly within the exam, you will be asked to calculate variances yourself. How do we calculate labour efficiency variance? Uh, we look at what the standard Uh, the standard cost is um, for the actual production how much should we have um, spent on our labour and we compare it because we're looking at efficiency compare it with the standard cost of the actual hours worked And so what are we going to do? Uh, the standard cost for the actual production. We know how many we produced. Uh, somewhere the actual production is cell C9. And I will put figures in, although you're not asked to check it, it will convince me cell C9 is 26,000. And how much should we have uh, spent on each unit? Uh, we're looking at labour, and so cell C4 uh, tells us how much uh, we should be spending on labour per unit. It's $48. Uh, and I said I will work out the figure, it'll convince us. Well, in the exam you don't need to waste time, but 26,000 times 48 is one two four eight zero 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 uh, I want to know uh, whether that whether we actually paid more or less than we should have done and so let's take the standard cost because we're not interested in the rate of pay variance the standard cost of the actual hours worked and so how many hours did we actually work uh, in cell A13, it tells us it was 150,000, but uh, we can't actually call it up from that cell. You know, there's words in there as well. Um, what's the standard cost per hour? Well, uh, look at um, row four, the direct labour. It says uh, the direct labour is six hours at eight dollars. Well, again, uh, we can't pick the um, $8 up from the formula the way it's been typed because there's other things in cell B4. And so uh, we'd have to work out the figures in the way I've written there. It's 150,000 times 8, which comes to how much? 1.2 million. And so although I did say, well, I've said twice, I think, don't waste time doing the arithmetic. You know, there's only two marks for this, but since we are here, I will check it. The difference is 48,000. We spent less than um, we would have expected, and so it's favourable. And of course, that is what's in cell B18. So it's taken me much longer here than it would have done in the exam, because I'm trying to explain. But the formula, we took C9 times C4, we subtracted 150,000 times 8. And so, which of those is it? It's C. Answer C. 
So although, as I've said, I've taken much longer than I would have done, uh, I, I still find those a bit messy, uh, quite honestly, because they could be phrased in different ways. But do bear in mind, it's the same sort of thing I said for section A, that although we have three things to do here, each of them is separate. So if part A is taking too long for only two marks, you know, jump to part B, part C, you've got to make sure overall you're getting more than half marks and then you're passing. So let's look at part B, which is completely separate. Here, forget all the formulae. It wants us to calculate, first of all, the sales volume variance. Sales volume variance and state whether it's favourable or adverse. Well, with variance, you can get the same figures in different ways, whichever way you've been learning it. I'll do it the way that's in our lectures. To get the sales volume variance, I'll take the actual sales, which in units is, where is it? Sales C7, C8. We actually sold 25,600. We compare with the budget sales, um, 25,000, and so we sold an extra 600 units. And so I immediately know it's going to be a favourable variance. Now to work out the amount now in dollars, remember we're doing marginal costing, and so we multiply by the standard contribution. Now the standard contribution per unit, which was up there in cell C6, was $28. And so the sales volume variance, 628, is 16800. I've already said it's favourable, we sold more than we expected. Uh, what about number two? The sales price variance. And is it favourable adverse? Well, again, how you do it's your choice. I'll do it the way I do it in the lectures. To check on price, we take our actual sales and we compare actual price with standard price. And so how many did we actually sell? We checked a minute ago, but sell C8. We sold 25,600. How much did we sell them for? Uh, B, cell B11 tells us that the actual sales revenue was 3066880. We're checking whether we sold them at the right price or not. And so, how much revenue should we have had? There were 25,600 units sold. The standard selling price is in cell C2. It's 120. And so, we, had we sold at the right price, we'd have had a revenue of 3072. Uh, and so the difference is our variance. I get the difference to be 5120. Uh, and is it favourable or adverse? Get it the right way around here. We should have sold, uh, we should have got that much revenue, 3.072 million. We actually got less revenue. We must have been selling at a lower price. The variance is adverse. All right, finally, and then we finished question two, part C. And again, the bits are, are not related. It wouldn't be fair for you to lose marks twice for the same mistake. Whether you got A right or wrong, whether you got B right or wrong, C stands on its own. Castilda's management accountant thinks that the direct labour rate 
and efficiency variances for month one could be interrelated. But what are they? Let's look back and see what the figures are, because it says explain how they could be interrelated. What variances have we got? Um, the labour rate of pay variance. The variances are there at the bottom of the spreadsheet. So labour rate variance is row 17, column B. I'm not interested in the uh, actual amount, but it's adverse. And so on its own, what does that mean? If the variance is adverse, it must have meant that we've paid a higher rate per hour. Than we should have done. So I don't know, well, I do know actually, don't I? Uh, the rate per hour, the standard rate B4 should have been $8 for every hour. If the labour rate uh, variance is adverse, We've, for some reason, we've paid more than $8 an hour. Maybe we've paid $9, $10, whatever. And of course, there are lots of reasons why that may have been the, uh, the case, why we've paid more per hour. Before, though, we answer the question, what about labour efficiency? Um, the labour efficiency is column B, row 18. Forget the amount, but the variance is favourable. And on its own, what does that mean? If you have a favourable efficiency variance, it means the workers are working faster. They're taking fewer hours per unit than we expected. So fewer hours per unit than standard, i.e. they're working faster. Well, those are both just stating a fact, but it says how could they be interrelated? And remember, interrelated means instead of looking at the two separately, how might they be connected? And although there are all sorts of reasons why they may have worked faster, why we may have paid more, I think it's fairly standard, and you'll know if you've watched the, the lecture, that what could have happened, the reason they could be connected, is that maybe we've paid higher wages to attract higher wages to get better workers. Got better workers, maybe have to pay more to attract them. But of course, if we do have better workers, Well, of course, if they're better workers, maybe that's why they work faster. Now, it's not all you could have written, but that would, perhaps as a sentence, would have got you the three marks. The other way you could have put it, similar idea, is that maybe you, it was the same workers, but you told them that if they work faster, then you'll pay them more. Well, same idea. If they do work faster, uh, that gives us our favourable efficiency variance. We pay them higher wages because they've worked faster. So either way around, it's interrelated. How the, could the two be connected? Okay, well, that's question two. So all that remains is to look at question three. <laughs>